All right, we are so excited to welcome everyone. We are here at American Airlines headquarters with Ronnie Skinner, who is the director of this entire facility. Ronnie, what would you like to tell us? I, I thank y'all for having me here. I appreciate the time with y'all. It's very exciting what y'all are doing and where y'all are heading. So I wish you the best with that. Fantastic. We also have Kayla Scott, our amazing organizational development coordinator. She keeps all of our schedules straight and budget straight and everything else. Everything right? straight. Everything straight. <laughs> right, Kayla? Yes, absolutely. So happy to be here. Thank you so much, Ronnie, for absolutely. your time, taking the time with us today, and we're really excited. Absolutely. Wishing you the best. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And my first question is, what were the most common concerns that team members voiced regarding the move to the new headquarters facility? Sure, certainly. So a few concerns that I could share. Number one, probably most importantly, was there was a concern about a lack of personal space availability okay. into what they had and what they were moving to. Right. So we basically, the message went out that it was you in a box. Right. And that was a very sincere message. Uh, so there was a lot of concerns, a lot of angst about it because uh, we are by nature hoarders <laughs> and, <laughs> and in our old campus we had memorial stuff that went back for 20, 30 years oh, and so people, they were very passionate about it sure. and so they were nervous about losing that. And the second question, were there any specific ways that American Airlines prepared their teams to address these concerns that proved to be beneficial? Certainly. So. Uh, several things to add here. Um, one of the things I would say that we, we got right is we started the communications very, very early. We were relentless with communications. So um, we didn't just send one email out and we were done. Uh, we, we had weekly communications about it. Uh, in order to make the move happen, we appointed two different classifications of people assisting us and it was across different departments. We had what we called the, the change captains, right. and they were responsible for discussing the things that an employee would see that was different from the old headquarters, if you will, to moving over here to the Skyview campus. So every week, these change captains met with their own departments. They discussed things that the new employee, the employees could expect coming to the new campus. And the other thing we had that uh, was involved is we had a move captain. And the move captain was responsible for when the time came, departmental-wise, getting the departments there, what they needed in a way to their seating, uh, into the floor space, and into the department space that they needed specifically for their items in storage. Uh, part of the move over here was not only did the employees go to an employee in one box, everywhere we could, by design, we curved the departmental storage tremendously back. So what was some of the most surprising feedback that you guys received either during or after the move from team members? Uh, so, so a few things that I could share is employees at the original old headquarters, if you will, they did not have electric set stands. So one of the big positives was everybody received one and everybody loves it. It is amazing during the course of the day. You really don't even think about it, but it's amazing during the course of the day how many times you change that configuration up and down. And, and I personally, myself included, from a health perspective, um, I, I think it's healthy not to be sitting in a chair all day long and give you the flexibility to, to be able to stand up uh, and it motivates you during the course of the day as well. Are there any other topics we haven't discussed that you feel would be helpful for the city of Fort Worth as we prepare for our move to future city hall? I do believe that communication is the best. Right. Uh, not one and you're done. I would certainly suggest start the purging concept as early as possible. And, and not only start it, but assign somebody to go do walks and see if it's actually happening. Um, we actually tracked our waste leaving out, whether it was um, recyclable or not, and we, we, we tracked it because we knew there was a lot of stuff in the building that needed to go and employees were not going to be able to do it. And we couldn't afford to get to the last minute and everybody then have to deal with it being forced. So the move captains in themselves, part of their job was to manage the purging and make sure people were doing that as they went along during the day. So at the end, at, as when we got to the move date, we, we didn't have such a backlog of all the purging items. 
So I, I, I would say that that's very important as well. What advice or talking points did American Airlines provide to their leadership for employees that were a little negative towards the move? A, a few separate things I would share. So um, for sure, make, make sure the leadership within your group is the ones sharing the message. Show that they're bought into it, show that they're involved in it, and, and let the message, if you will, come from the top down. And as much as you can, show that they're living it and they're, they're going to be a part of the change as well. Uh, a few of the other things I would say is um, one of, we, were, we were bringing in renderings um, as the construction moved along so that we could help with some anxiety so that people could see basically what, if you will, they were getting into and some of the amenities that we were going to have. So another thing that helped was talking about not so much what you're not going to have, but what you are going to have. So the leadership would explain a lot of times about the amenities and the things that we're going to have in these buildings that you didn't have before. So I, I think we mixed it up really well so that, you, yes, there were things you were going to lose, but also we spoke to the things you were going to get as an addition in regards to your amenities. So, so definitely highlight that. Don't let it go all negative. Make sure you're speaking to some of the things you're going to get as a part of this. Right. So every chance that you can, bring the product out, show the product, show the demo, involve the people. It goes a long way. And, and just to follow up on that, it wasn't just the one box. It was also you couldn't bring a space heater. You couldn't bring, there were other things that, along with that, that, correct? That is correct, that is correct. So, so because of the city four fire code, we reminded everybody the things that are not allowed in the buildings. Uh, and, and we moved into a building that uh, everything was functional, if you will, because we did have an older building. And so uh, I, I, I think people learned right away they could count on the steady temperatures, and I think that went away as well. But yes, you're absolutely right. There was a lot of people that had things that they weren't supposed to have, and they didn't get to come with them. And they didn't get to come with them. Were there any hindsight things uh, that American Airlines learned after the move that they wish they had incorporated? So I, I, I was trying to think about that. Um, I, I don't really think so, not on a big scale. Um, part of the, because of the way the building was built out, we moved into this building one tire at a time. And I would say because of that, we did take advantage of a few misses. And so because we moved into it one tire at a time, then when the second tire moved in, we did change a few things up. And so each time we brought a tower online and moved those people into these towers, there probably was a few things we changed. I don't remember specifically what they were, but that allowed us not to move the mass at one time. Um, we wound up moving 5,500 people into this facility uh, over the four different tires one month at a time to kind of give you an idea of scope of how we moved. Right. Yeah. And and there was a lot of excitement because I remember we had a huge team here. Yes, yes. We had lots of, go ahead we, and talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So we had a welcome committee. Yes. Uh, we had a welcoming bag. Uh, we put the essentials in that you could think of that somebody would need in a new building that they didn't have before they might have forgotten. Uh, we did some giveaways for the food programs uh, that created a buzz. So every, every chance that you can, uh, bring on something that gives some buzz and gives people something to shift their focus to. It worked really well. How did y'all address individuals that love to play music or individuals that maybe would have a sports uh, game going mm -hmm. while, while at work and they'd be glancing over or right. watching a news program? How was that handled? So, so a few separate things that I would share on that. So when we did the design of the building, um, there's a noise reduction system referred to as white noise right. and by design we put it in place so that it has the ability to be adjusted in many areas within a, a landing on a floor. Mm -hmm. So number one, that was one way we disguised the site if you will and buffered it out. Right. So that helped a lot. The other thing we had is we actually had training where we talk about building ethics is what we called it. Yes. Uh, and it was the building ethics of you moving into an open campus. So as an example, as you pointed out the noise, we spoke to that, we reminded people that's why you have, we call them huddle rooms. So if you need to take a phone call, if you think you're going to have something that may be contentious, go to a huddle room, it gives you the ability to show at the door, you have 100% privacy. So this may sound funny, but just as much as you're thinking about the noise, um, all the kitchenettes are the same. Uh, but one of the concerns we had was talking to people about 
their choice of food, warming it up, and the smell of food. Yes, so we actually went down to the point that in the building, in the ethics piece, we started talking about food. And we mentioned to people, be mindful of what you're bringing in to have with you at lunch today. Uh, there's a hundred people on a floor, uh, and be mindful of your neighbors. Yes, sir. And so uh, we actually did that, and, uh, and people are intelligent people, and they understood what you were trying to say, if you will, and we didn't have any pushback. With and I will tell you so far, and myself included, every now and then you get reminded, hey, hey, keep it down or something like that. But on a big scale, I, we've been here, and, and I've not seen or heard any issues on a big scale from a noise problem at all. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to cut down on trash, um, and we thought it was the time to implement it. And so in this building, we chose not to give everybody a personal trash can. Uh, I actually, myself, I thought that was going to be more of a concern, uh, but it really, it never slowed people down at all. So what we do is, within a common space, we probably have one small trash can to probably 30 people. But we also said that if you wanted to bring in your small trash can, you're more than welcome to do it. And it was amazing because you can see in the building at the end of the day, uh, you see a VP emptying their own trash, you see a manager emptying their own trash. But what it will do, I, and I tell you because I live it myself, it, it, it requires you and, and you're mindful about being a little bit more of a good steward uh, when you think about waste when you don't have your own trash can. So I think that was a positive that came out of that. Right. And, and again, from a big pushback perspective, it did, we didn't have any pushback at all, and I thought we were going to, but we didn't. All right, what types of communication and or training did American use to prepare employees for the transition prior to the move? Sure. So one thing we were lucky with, our architects had done this before, and they provided a lot of different tools that we could use to communicate this out. Uh, the move captains were provided a lot of tools that they could speak to their own departments with. Um, we did, uh, we started what we call a one campus, one team email distribution list. So everybody that was going to be moving, they got a weekly email and in the email it talked about what we were going to achieve by the next week. It talked about the moving dates, it gave pictures of the construction, um, and it also gave you a, an email that was uh, a, a one station email that was addressed during the day that you could send an email to and ask questions about or concerns to anything you had about the move. So that was probably one of the most popular and the best ideas we'd had, giving the people a, a stream for that. And, and then a weekly communication that went out. And even to today, we actually still use that, one, we call it OCOT, email distribution. Um, and now it incorporates our entire campus. One of the concerns that we're hearing about is parking, and I remember that came up here as well. Yes. So can you talk, because people are concerned about how, how are we all going to get in there on time? Our building is lead gold, and by design of that, um, there's no reserved parking with the exception of the obvious, which is handicap. Right. Uh, so outside of that, there are parking spots that's designated for efficient fuel efficient cars. Right. There's parking designated for electric car charging cars. And what did American do to help build awareness around that open etiquette, the, the, the okay, open concept etiquette? Well, there was several times where we let the architect that was building our facility get in front of our people and speak to that. They did, uh, in the beginning, they did several Q and A's. There was a lot of questions and answers as to why we were moving to that. Uh, collaboration obviously was one of the biggest things at heart. Uh, and that was one of the key drivers of the design of the building. Uh, on purpose, we have on the northern ends, we have common space that's readily available to everybody. It is a fantastic place to meet up with. One of the things that I'm amazed at every day is how many people choose to go meet at the coffee place. And it's very cross department, and it's more about people that know each other. But by doing that, it's amazing how much, how many times and how frequent people talk about shop just because they're in passing, it was not scheduled, and it just happened to be because you're going from one end of the building to the next.